Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ajo here with KissAndLog.com. Today we are going to go over how to measure current when your current you're trying to measure is beyond the capability of the instrument you have. Uh, for instance, most multimeters can only measure 10 amps. What if you got to measure 15? Uh, now you might have a meter that measures 20. Uh, I understand they used to make them. I think they stopped doing it because 20 amps was a lot of energy in a handheld instrument. Uh, if you guys know the story on that, that'd be great to let us know. Just give us a comment down below, please. Um, anyway, most meters 10 amps limited. This one, really great meter if you can find them on eBay. Fluke 8068 used to be top of the line kind of thing. This thing's capable of 2 amps, only 2 amps. Um, even the nice, expensive, uh, new flukes can only do 10 amps. Um, now this Handtech current meter can do 65 amps, but even that, even though it sounds like a lot, if you're doing inrush current measurements, that's not enough. I did a video the other day showing in how to measure that. Kind of talked about how you can get around the limitations of this meter because we did reach the limit of this meter, okay? So today we're gonna pull out some meters do some testing on the meters and we're going to show you how to do it on the scope as well all right we're going to show you how to get around that limitation okay hey let's do it all right guys so i'm doing a test here and i want to sh demonstrate how you can take current measurements okay so what i've got here is from the power supply over here i've got this return the black and then i have two reds okay they're going back to my power supply i'll show you that in a moment um but anyway so I have two red leads and one return, okay? And return, come, so return comes over here, connects these two guys. The two reds go into these multimeters and they come out of the commons. They go in the, the amp settings and they come out the commons and I have a yellow and green coming over here. And they're just shorted together right here with the, with the return, with the black. So the current split up from the power supply, come in these two meters, and then go back in one lead back to the power supply. So you may do this because you may have, uh, let's say you're reading um, 15 amps. Well, most meters are only capable of 10 amps these days. So you can take two wires and read half the current and one half the current in the other one. And you can see they're both about three amps. Okay, um, so that, that helps you take readings when you're, you're trying to read current above what your instrumentation is capable of. You can just split the current up. Now, it may not split totally even. This is pretty close. Okay, the other thing I'm doing is, um, I'm also, you might wonder why I have all these meters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why in a minute here. But the other thing I, the other part of the test setup is I have this Hamtech current uh, meter. It's capable of 65 amps, so it can actually read all the current at this level. Now it's on this wire here that's going to this meter, and right now it's saying 2.96, and that's about. Now that you have to multiply that by 10 because this is a 10x setting here on the Hamtech, so it's about 2.9 amps here, about 3 amps here, so pretty close. Now, because the hand tech can actually read all the current, I could just put both wires in there, and now I get six amps. Now, the current comes in and goes this way, right? I'm gonna show you something just for fun. What if, what if I reverse the direction of one of the wires? Zero amps. The fields cancel each other. The magnetic fields around each wire cancels as it goes through. Uh, just a little tip. That's what a common mode choke does. Okay, just to give you a heads up there. Anyway, so there, there's that. Okay, now this is a static test. We're going to go to the scope and take a test too. But this is just going through multimeters just to give you a really easy demonstration. Now, the one thing I want to point out is sometimes you might have two wires that aren't exactly the same size. So you're not getting exact same current readings. And also, between multimeters, um, when you're, if you don't have two meters of the same meter, uh, the same, you know, model and everything, 
um, you may get slightly different readings because there's no current sense resistor in these meters that senses the uh, the senses the voltage drop that gives this reading okay so you get a little bit of a voltage drop well that could be different between meters so let me just show you that okay I'm gonna take it off this guy and I'll just take these two guys see we're at six amps here I'll just move them over here look 3.4 amps 2.6 now, if I leave it here long enough, these resistors might warm up and they might end up balancing out. That kind of happened on these other two. But look, I'll just move it over here. 3.3. Let's go back to here. Oh, well, that's 3.36. That's pretty close. Go back to this one. 3. And... Since we can read 10, I could actually just do this. And look, 6 amps. Well, we're reading all 6 amps anyway, right? <laughs> okay, hold on a sec. Um, come more this one. 2.96. And I have to move this guy over here. And 3.26. So, just wanted to demonstrate that, that... Yeah, you also have to make sure that your um, meters are reading the same current. Now, look, 3.2. The other thing it could be is maybe it's not just a meter. Maybe it's this uh, lead. Maybe that's also causing some imbalance. So here, let me take let me take this blue lead, and I'll plug this blue one up into the red. So now we have three leads coming out of the red part of the supply okay so let me see where am I lacking over here 2.7 let's see if I can help get a little more current here went up to 2.8 so it helped a little bit not a lot 3.5 so it does help a little bit see you know so it the lead it might be more the meter than the leads okay and it could be this yellow lead but the other thing you want to do is, is wiggle your connector connectors and make sure your connectors are are on tight that it's not your connectors so all right just wanted to kind of show you as a static measurement two things the meters can throw you off a little bit they won't balance equally and your wires you might have one wire longer uh, length than the other one so um, you can switch leads around just to see watch this I can take let's see I can take these two red leaders here okay that here let's just make a note here 2.8 almost and 2.5 so it actually worked better this way now this is one sanity check just to see if it's your meter or your lead so now I'm back at 2.8 what if I switch these Uh, that's about the same that didn't make too much of a difference so yeah so you want to kind of test out your instrumentation see what's going on and uh, okay now let's look at this current thing you know I was doing inrush measurements one time and my measurements were all maxing out 65 amps well this guy's rated right 65 amps but now what if I split it like this and do a an inrush test then maybe I can get a more accurate uh, peak reading right so let's just go look at the scope and see if that works out what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take a couple readings on one of these leads and then I'll put both of them in and I'll switch it around so I'll switch each lead and I'll do both and see what readings we get on the scope let's do that real quick okay just quick um, look see how I hooked this up see I just have one return two reds Okay, so there the current's being shared as it comes out of here. Now all I have to do this power supply capo is six amps. See if I go here three amps here three amps here, I go zero volts basically about a half a volt. Because uh, what I do is I just start to bring up the voltage and it just current limit. See current limit, it's in current limit. And I can just leave it there forever. I mean, these power supplies, this GWN stack, you know, it's solid power supply. It's going to work great. And 
it'll put out six amps all day. Okay, so that's how I did that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, pull these out and push them back in and get that inrush current, okay? Just into a short. And let's just see if that works. Hey, just quick explanation. I used this little guy here. Whoops. <laughs> I used this little guy here to plug into the multimeter. I just put the uh, probe in there for the current meter, plug that in the multimeter. Has a little nub here showing the return side. So, yeah. And you see that little nub right there. So, these are pretty cool. And you can always plug another set of banana jacks into the, those little holes. That's what those are for. Alright, just wanted to kind of show you that. You can get these on Amazon pretty inexpensive. You know, I should create an Amazon store, huh? Uh, I guess that kind of stuff helps me, so I should. Okay. Okay, guys, quick setup. I'm on channel one. Turn off all the other ones. Uh, or the other one. <laughs> so uh, when I'm on channel one, I... Whoops, here we go. Channel one. It's DC coupling because we're going to look at DC current. Uh, I got the bandwidth limit on, but I can turn that off because um, it doesn't really matter. That's good to get rid of noise sometimes. Just cores, uh, 10x. So the uh, meter, uh, yeah, the current probe is going to be in 10x settings. So that's good. It's supposed to be in one mega ohm input impedance. And it says volts. Let's switch that to amps. Inverts off and de-skew. I don't care about that for this. Um, all right, cool. Uh, horizontal, it's gonna be a pretty quick measurement. I got five milliseconds. You know, I'll, I'll just start with that. Now, uh, trigger, if I just push this in, it centers it on the waveform, which it's reading about uh, th uh, 3.34 amps uh, RMS right now. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is I once I push it in, it centers it on the waveform, and then after I that do that, then I want to bring it up a little bit because I expect the current to go above three amps. The power supply is limited to six amps, but I think, and we're reading about half the current because I got it on one lead right now, but I, I expect it to bump up a little bit higher before the current limit clicks in. So um, set that up a bit, and then what I do is just hit the single. So it'll trigger one time and freeze it, okay? So I'm gonna pull out the uh, power supply jacks and I'll just put them back in. Here it goes. There we go. So, cool. Um, I can see a spike here, but see how, it looks like it just comes up nicely at three amps. I mean, that's the way it should, but there's actually that little spike that I, I kind of expected to happen. I mean, you know, into a dead short, you're, power, that's going to be a really fast glitch. Pretty hard for the power supply to react that quick. So here, there's a couple ways I can do it. I can just spread it out or I can zoom in. If I zoom in, see that window right there? That's what we're seeing. And you can see how I went off the screen. So you know what? Uh, the other th And that's just deep memory, you know. I got all this time frame here. And then I zoom in on this and look how, look, there's a teeny little glitch there, and then there's this one. So I kind of bounce when I put it in. Um, all right, so the other way I can do is just spread this out. <laughs> the easy way. Okay, I'll just do it that way. And what I'm gonna do is, see it clipped it right there. It actually went up to, okay, I'm a, by the way, I'm one amp per division and when I move this around, I'm at the three amp mark. That's three amps below. It says minus three because it's this is a zero setting. One, two, three. So I'm at the minus three. But that little arrow shows the that's my reference point. That's basically ground. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven amps where it clipped. If I bring it down, now I'm two amps per two, four, six, eight. So see it actually measured one full grid off the screen before it clipped it and I'm looking at the width of that that looks like it might go about this high so I think this might be okay let's try that single and I'll plug it in again boink hey look uh, there's a little bit of a thing there and then here so 
says 10 amps. So kind of peaked up to 10 amps and this is 200 microseconds. So it, it kind of settled down at about 200 microseconds, I'd say. So there we go. Now, if I were to take both those wires in here, see that's uh, 10 amps. This thing's capable of 65, so it's capable of actually measuring the, the total thing. Let's just do it that way. So let's just say we know we're gonna be, uh, let's go five amps per division, because we know we're gonna be quite a bit higher now. And I'm gonna raise this trigger above six amps now, so say seven amps right there. Okay, hit the single. And let's see what we get. There we go. So that's about 19.8. See? So going around one wire. Now what you can do, especially if you know your wires might not be exact or if you want to make sure, you can try it a couple times on one wire and then switch it to the other wire. And if you have three or four wires, you can put it on each wire. And let's say you get two amps on one, three amps, another five, and another two. You just add them all up, and that's your total peak current. But there's a demonstration. I hope, hope that helps and uh, kind of helps sh uh, show you how you can get around your instrumentation. Uh, in this case, this, you know, this meter is capable of 65 amps, but when I was doing inrush the other day, it, uh, you know, I could have used, I could have split up the input current to make sure I was getting the peak current. But it was just a demonstration. I wasn't really concerned about getting exact measurement, so I didn't do that. But you know, but now that I kind of brought up that this is a technique, so I thought I should show it. All right, guys, if this was helpful. Thumbs up, please. Thanks. See you next time.